Hello, gentlemen. How are you doing? Hey, Great. how are you? I'm very good. So uh, we have a new album. It's called Two to One. It's coming out in a couple of weeks. Some people have already heard it. I've heard it. It sounds like a rock and roll record. Uh, what brought the two of you together to do this? Well, I think I think it was really Cleopatra that brought us together. Right. Uh, al although we knew each other already, and we had already done an EP together, um, I had been doing some uh, sort of one-off things for Cleopatra, and uh, Matt Green, uh, the uh, VP of New Acquisitions, suggested, you know, why don't you and, and Dennis do an electric album? So I. I got a hold of Dennis and we, we sort of kicked it around a little bit and decided to do it. And Dennis, what, how, how did you feel about working with James? Oh, great. You know, it's, I, I had also released a couple of things on Cleopatra in the past. Right. And uh, so I knew those guys, I knew Brian Pereira and, and uh, I knew, I knew they were a good label and that they, you know, if they, if they owed you money, they paid. That's always and a good sign. Very yeah. unusual, you know, these days. But yeah. uh, but so I I knew Cleopatra was a was an upstanding label, and and I knew that I enjoyed working with James because you know we had we worked together on Acoustic Ko already, and right. that was the process was smooth and and uh, yeah, I was keen on being able to work with him on presenting something that was all new original material. Cool. So the original material, is it written with the two of you together or did you come in with stuff that you were, had in, in progress or how did it work? We, uh, we both presented ideas to each other. And then, you know, once we agreed on, on which song ideas we were gonna work on, then, uh, you know, I took, I took a lot of actual uh, coaching, I guess you'd say, or encouragement from James on on the, the the stuff that I was working on, and 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 vice versa. I wrote some lyrics for him and did some tuning up on on those those songs that uh, uh, James had actually uh, had a couple of other guys write lyrics. Right. So you know, we started with a rough you know rough draft, and then we we both hammered it into shape. <laughs> Alrighty. Now, one of the songs that I wanted to touch on was a thing called Stable, which has a very much a kind of a Stooges vibe to it. Uh, is that something that you had a, much to do with, James? Yeah, I, you know, I, I wrote the riff on it. And, yeah. uh, and uh, of course, I don't, I don't write lyrics. And so I never have. I mean, I, I have, but it, it's so, it's so agonizing for me that, you know, I just decided that's not my thing. And, Fair but uh, yeah, I did. It, it has the, it has that sound. You know, it's kind of uh, unmistakable. And, and you you say it kind of offhandedly. It has that sound, but to a lot of people who have grown up listening to that stuff, that sound is very distinctive and very important to us. So, how do you get that sound briefly? <laughs> well, let me just say I'm really happy to hear that because that's the only way I know how to play. <laughs> <laughs> that's fantastic. But anyway. Um, you know, it's just, it's the way I, uh, I'm largely self-taught and it's just the way I sort of used the guitar all my life to kind of emote. Um, and as, especially as a teenager, you know, with lots of angst, that, right. that was, that's where it came from. Cool, cool. And so writing the lyrics for these riffs, did you talk to each other much about them or did you just go off and do your thing? How did it work? Well, I, I would, uh, the lyrics of Stable were written by this guy named uh, Paul Nelson Kimball, his friend okay. of James, he knew from before. And, and there's two songs on the record that Paul Nelson Kimball wrote the lyrics for. And one of them, I, I changed a couple lines on Stable. I don't think I changed anything. I think it was just perfect the way it was. So that didn't really need any any work done to it. Right. So, you know, some of the other ones did need need quite a bit. Right. And right. When, when we did work on that stuff, it was a matter of uh, even though we don't live that far from each other, you know, half an hour drive, we would just send the stuff over by email and and uh, 
you know, here, here's my next draft. And then he would look at it and make suggestions and send it back. And then, you know, we kept working on it that way. And there was a couple of times that we actually did get together physically to, to go over some stuff, but, uh, but mostly it was, we just did it over the email. Cool. So when you went in the studio and recorded the thing, um, is there a band with you guys or did you overdub everything or how, how did it work? Yeah, we, we got, we got, I, I pulled together some guys that I already had played with before uh -huh. and uh, like uh, Michael Urbano, the drummer, and I had played with a bass player actually only once live at a, at a festival that, that I got invited to guest. Um, Cheetah Chrome was playing and needed somebody <laughs> or wanted me to guest with him. And so uh, anyway, I asked that bass player if he could, if he could do this gig. And, and he brought a lot to the party as well. And I, it was a simple band like that. It was just bass, guitar, drums, and vocals. Right. That, that's pretty much all you need. And was, was there a producer or did you guys produce it yourself? How, how did it work in the studio? I produced. Ah. And, and it, producing in what way? Did you kind of direct everybody or just plug everybody in and say, let her rip? For, for the, yeah, in, in this case, producing was to try to stay out of everybody's way. Right. You know, make, make a simple record and, yep. uh, and make it sound good. And it, it came out great. We were all very happy with it. Uh, but, yeah, and uh, it seemed it seems like the first half of the album is more rockers, and then it kind of uh, I wouldn't say mellows out, but it it slows down a little bit. From do you, have you thought of this in terms of an album in the old sense? Yeah, that's what I thought about it too. I you know I, I'm not sure you know we we all of it, actually it's a pretty up tempo album. But usually the way I see it anyway is is like you know a couple fat up tempo numbers and then a, a medium tempo number and then a couple more up tempo numbers and it, it repeats that on both sides right right and uh, is, is there a plan to play these songs live if and when we're allowed to all get together in one room together again no not really we we uh uh the logistics of that would be significant right and you know, and um, we, no, we don't have any plans right now to, to tour or do anything like that. And, and, you know, and who's doing that anyway nowadays? Well, that's the thing. Yeah. So you're, you're both in California. Is that right? No, he, Dennis is on the big Island. And oh, I live, that's right. Yep. On the big I, Island. I live, I live on the big Island too from most of the time, but I happen to be in California actually doing this record. Right. And, and when the shutdown came, I so, see. you know, I was just finishing mixing this record and was going to master it and couldn't do anything. Okay. So we were, for, we were fortunate actually that we aren't going, we weren't thinking about touring this because the thing is that the people who were thinking about touring were holding their albums back and thinking that they could get out touring behind them. Right. And in our case, you know, it was like, luckily, Cleopatra knew somebody who could master it. And we got pushed to the head of the line. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> good place to be. <laughs> so, so the record is out in a couple of weeks. What's what are each of you up to after that? Because everybody needs to know what, you know, with, with your background, Stooges and Radio Birdman, it's, it's, a, there's a legacy there that, uh, do you think about that? What you kind of, to. Well, yeah, you know, uh, Radio Birdman still exists, right? And as an entity, and and you know, we were touring up until up through the end of last year, regularly, and um, and of course this year we couldn't do anything. In fact, I was supposed to go over there and uh, get together with those guys uh, at mid year, and it, it, it I couldn't go, you know, and. Um, so when travel can resume and I can go back to Sydney, then we'll get together and see what we want to do at that. Yeah, from yeah. that point, yeah. you know, because I see that you guys were playing TVI it, when you're when you're doing your gigs in the past November or whatever. So obviously, yeah, TVI was one of our uh, staples in in our set back in not like 1974. Right. And, <laughs> and you know we. 
we it's one of the things that we brought back because it's so much fun to play. Right, right. So how did you discover the Stooges? Well, I grew up in Ann Arbor, Michigan, and, that and they, were, they were a local <laughs> band. And did you, so did you see them as a local band in, in the day? Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. When, when, I, when I first started seeing the Stooges, they, it was complete uh, madness. You know, they, they didn't really have any songs. They used to do what they called energy freakouts. Right. This is before James was in the band. Yep, yep, yep. Which I think James brought some discipline to the to the party, but but <laughs> they uh, actually they didn't actually start with real songs until they got their um, uh, their contract with Elektra, and right. they were told to go make an album in New York City. Yeah, I said, okay, well we better start writing some actual songs. <laughs> right. but, but I used to go see them with my friends, you know, and it, I was in high school at the time. And we used to love going to see the Stooges. I can imagine. And I see they just reissued or issued the first time the last original Stooges band album, a live show before they uh, got rid of Dave Alexander that was from the yeah, it was at Goose 1970. Lake. Goose Lake Festival is a big yeah. rock festival in Michigan. They were, they were trying to sort of do a Michigan version of Woodstock. Right. And uh, I didn't go, by the way. I a lot of my friends went and I was going to go, but then I thought, do I really want to camp out with a zillion hippies? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I didn't want to. <laughs> and what, what did you think of it, James? Did, did you, have I you checked that out? Either. I didn't go either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> but I saw plenty of Stooges gigs, that's for sure. Yeah, definitely. And have you been in touch with Iggy at all? No, I think, uh, you know, I toured with him all together about 10 years. I yep. think we said everything we had to say to each other. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, you guys played here in Auckland at Big Day Out. I saw it. I was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. We had a good time. Didn't think I was ever going to see that band again, but there you go. <laughs> yeah, well, we didn't either, you know. <laughs> so it worked out really well. Very good. So, all right, well, hopefully um, this album will work out really well. It's called Two to One. James Williamson, Dennis Tech, what else could you ask for? Basic rock and roll, right? That's it, rock and roll. That's it. Keep on rocking. Thank you very much, guys. Appreciate it.